Now, Team Kalache, you've been busy there looking at me posting about obstetric fistula and going, eh, affect. I've seen you by there with your judgments. I have. And the truth is, it doesn't matter where you're from. I mean, if you're going to go through prolonged labor, doesn't matter if you are in Nairobi Hospital, doesn't matter if you are in a uh, level 5 hospital in Machakos, it doesn't matter. The truth is, it can happen to anyone. And I think it's important for you to meet people who've gone through this um, issue and have lived with it and finally found a way to get out of it. And that's why as we count down to you removing that 250 for the 250 for 250, 250 women around the country this year of 2018, I want to introduce you to a lady who I'm so humbled to sit next to because she has survived this situation after going through obstetric fistula for 19 years. Leslie, so nice of you to be here with me and just, I mean, I'm just encouraged by First of all, you look amazing. Let's just start there. You look, you look amazing. Unizali wa wapi, umegro wapi? Unizali wa kumwani hospital in Nairobi. Na I grew up in Parkland. You grew up in Parki. When you demu amta. Lakini, iki tu inaitua obstetric fistula. What happened? I mean, and when did you get it? I got it in 1998. I gave birth in 1998. How old were you? I was 20. You were 20? Yeah. 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 And, and how was labor? What happened? Like just the process? Okay, I gave, I started my labor on a Wednesday night. I first went to a private hospital. At the time I was living in Umoja. From Parklands to Umoja. So I went to a private hospital on a Wednesday night. The following morning on Thursday, I decided to move to another hospital. Nazareth Hospital in Kiambu. Yeah. yeah, now from there, I slept that Thursday. I was giving birth on a Friday. Wait a minute, wait a minute. So, wait a minute, you were in labor, or you were in labor, or you were in What? We're talking about 48 hours? Yeah. Kablo deliver? On a Wednesday night yeah. to on Friday. What? And what were the doctors saying at this point? They didn't tell me anything. They just waited for me to Scream. So after you've gone through this excruciating labor, you give birth, at which point did things start to change in your body? Uh, like after like after two weeks, a month like that, mm -hmm. because it's a long time I can't remember well. Mm -hmm. So it just happened. I didn't even know what was happening. So, so for you, all of a sudden, you were unable to hold yeah. your stool? I thought it was a process of healing. With time it will stop, yeah. but it never stopped. So did you tell your doctors? I didn't tell anyone, I just kept quiet. Oh, didn't? No, no one? No Your one. Mom. For, for one year, I didn't. You didn't say anything to anybody? And and how were you handling the situation? Because, I mean, for you, um, I understand it's, you were unable to hold your stool, so how were you operating? I just used to stay in those most of the time. You, so now you were not in college, you were just taking care of the baby, you were just at home? For the first one year, I was at home. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I just used to stay in the house yeah. with the baby. And then because you have access to a bathroom, you can yeah. clean up, you can mm. do everything. That's how no, nobody realized they were suffering from it. I just, you didn't even want to tell your mom? No. Why? I just didn't know how to start. And then I was younger, and then it was like, she was like, Umezama Pema. Yeah, so already there was that stigma of Umezama Pema, Umezao Kiwa Nyumbani. So now, fast forward to a couple of years now, you've... It's because it, for you to have kept quiet, that means now you decided you're going to live with it as a, it's become your life. Mm -hmm. So obviously now you had to start working. You have to take care of this child. So what happened when you started working and, and you have to work? Maybe you have to take a mother to go to work or go travel sometimes. How, what were you doing? Okay, I was never employed. Mm -hmm. And I didn't want to look for a job because, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. because I didn't want to explain. Mm. So what I did, I, I did uh, self-employment, mm -hmm. I looked for business to do, mm -hmm. yeah, I, can be employed. I can go to work anytime I want. And when you're not comfortable, you don't go. And so when did you find out that this is not a normal thing, you should not be living with this thing? How many years were you in this thing? I, I, I knew about it one year after giving birth, but now when I went to the doctor, he didn't when I explained what I was suffering from, he just told me it was an infection. An infection? You were given medicine? Yeah, he gave me medicine, mm. and after using it, there was no change. And so then, how many years did you suffer with the fistula? I suffered in 19 years. 
19. Hi, Leslie. So, so that means you shouldn't be this skinny. You had denied yourself food, Maka, you become skinny and you're not supposed to be. Your stomach has shrunk without the intention of shrinking. You forced yourself into that. And so for these 19 years, you've been hiding. I mean, life must have gone on. Did you later get married? I mean, what, what happened in your life? Yeah, I, I got married to the father of my child and we gave birth to two more after that. But it was through cesarean. Through cesarean. So that means you've gone, gotten married, gone through two CSs, but you're still going through this problem because the fistula has not been fixed. And what about your husband? I mean, surely you are two people in the house. Did he know? I don't know because he kept quiet. And you didn't say? But for him, it was just quiet. But sometimes he could react in a funny way, but he never And are you still together? You, you broke up. So when did you actually go and seek help? Okay, it was just uh, by coincidence. I went and visited my friend who she had given birth uh, like, like six weeks after and she was going through the same experience. Now when she told me about her problem, Kanyambia, she's going to Kenyatta Hospital. She had had the, the, the camp, about the camp at, 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 at the Kenyatta Hospital. So Kanyambia, she, the following day she's going. So I have the same problem. That was the first person you told. Yeah. You should not be suffering. Mm. Mm. And I found so many women suffering the same thing. And how was it when you finally talked to these other women and just, you know, just hearing that it's not you alone and yours even could be less, uh, you know, demeaning than other women? How did that feel? I felt I was not alone. It is something that happens to most women and it is not my fault or anyone's fault. And then people are there to help. If you just talk to someone, people are there to help. So if, if, it, if, if you were now to just be given the opportunity to talk to other young women, because for you, you are pretty young. There, you know, there are these urbanites who have been posting and saying, why are you talking about this? It doesn't affect us. Why are you telling us? What would you tell another young woman when you are not going to be Ama, ame, ako naishida na ame, ame nyamazia kama wewe. Eh. Niza kuambia they are not alone. It can happen to anyone. They should not be ashamed of it. It is not your fault. I can say it is not. It can just happen. My friend was a lawyer. She went to a private hospital last year. And it happened. You see, that's such, that, you see, that's such a nice thing to tell me because, you know, we're there thinking, but me, I am going to afford this doctor who's going to make sure nothing happens to me. But yet, there you are, your friend. It happened. And, and I hope she's gotten the help that she needs now. She got the help. And this is why we're trying to raise these funds. Ni 250 to... Happy to you to because there's someone, your sister, you are, even your sister will not tell you. Yeah. Your mother, I'm a car now maybe for 50 years without me. So, happy to me to 250 to. 250 to. Just sacrifice your lunch, sacrifice your airtime, sacrifice just so that somebody can get bus fare to go to the clinic, can get themselves the, the items they need as they wait for the surgery that will be what we call a dignitary, a dignitary pack and we will share with you what that means because there are certain things you need. Imagine you, if, you, if you are leaking, you can't control yourself. What are you supposed to do? You need something to help you get from point A to point B. So please join the 250 for 250 campaign and let us restore some dignity to some women. Let no one be left behind.